how beautiful. And it gets more and more beautiful the closer I get to you. the mountains. That was cheesy. Welcome back to Old Souls Travel, the moment we've all been waiting for, well maybe I've just been waiting for, is finally here. We're gonna talk about the Alhambra. I'm excited. My gag order has been lifted and I have lots of things I want to talk about, but I think these guys have a couple things to share too. Absolutely, super excited to uh, give you guys our tour of the Alhambra and the Generalife Gardens. We got to see a lot of really amazing buildings and amazing infrastructure and it was just really awesome time. Yeah, and stick around till the end, not just because I want more hours on our view time, but primarily for yourself, there are so many interesting facts about the Alhambra that we won't get to tell you about during the tour, but that you really will want to know if you're going to visit there, and we suggest doing so. Welcome, Welcome to, to Granada. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's definitely worth it, and this yeah. was worth it. Um, we wanted to go the short way, or so we thought. Um, the way that looked the shortest on the map was actually probably the longest way, because there's a lot of uphill walking. So the glutes you, were you, feeling really good that day. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you feel like you want to take that walk, we definitely recommend it. It was beautiful. But make sure you stretch beforehand. Yes. Because it, yeah, it can be a little strange. Definitely stretch, but I will say I would recommend it. Walking through the Alba scene in the early morning of dawn when Brendan is not really quite awake uh, gives you a great little picture into that historical neighborhood. Nobody else is awake. It's quiet and you just kind of get it all to yourself. So I loved doing that. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can walk down the other side. So mm -hmm. you're yes. gonna, if you walk up, you gotta walk back down. And so down. if you walk down on the other side, there's a really beautiful park over there, and then you get down into like the shopping district. And uh, it just, all in all, the walk was good. We got a lot of steps. We always get a lot of steps when we are in Europe. That's for sure. Checking off the bucket list. Brendan, is this on your bucket list also? I don't think so. Um, should it have been? Probably, it's pretty amazing so far. Uh, waiting to uh, learn a little bit about it. Uh, but last night, from seeing just the magnitude of it at night, it was just amazing. So probably, but the, the thing is that there's so many things in the world that it's impossible to break it down into just 200 things. So 226 just, in your case. 226 in my case. We'll call uh, this 227. Okay, number 227. Added in retrospect. <laughs> when we first entered the Alhambra complex, we went to the left to go to sort of the main area. And along the way, I got distracted by one of my favorite spots in the entire complex. Buenos dias. We are in the Jardine de San Francisco. And this is like breathtaking. It's not the lavish garden that you're used to when you go into some of the botanical gardens that we see in modern day but it's just absolute perfection as you look around it's just really simple and relaxed and you know you can definitely see yourself even today coming out and just laying among the roses picking a fresh pomegranate for your breakfast and maybe sitting under the tree and looking for water And after the gardens, the next big thing that you see was actually one of my favorites. It was the palace of Carlos V, or Charles V, depending on who you ask. And it's actually really cool because it's not Arabic. 
it actually is a Renaissance building. And what happened was the grandson of Ferdinand and Isabella actually came to the Alhambra and fell in love with it. And he's like, you know what, I want to build a palace right next to it so that I can see it every day. Really awesome building. It's got two stories. Um, the inside is circular and uh, there's also a museum there. But at the very least, you definitely need to take a spin around. Check it out for yourself. And after we spun around Carlos's beautiful Renaissance building, we still had time before our appointment to go see all of the palaces because they limit the amount of people that are allowed to go in there at one time. So make sure you get a reservation time in advance because they do sell out. But the Alcazaba is definitely worth visiting. It is this wonderful fortification. Almost all of the pictures from outside and the sunset we had, it's all like the Alcazaba stealing it because it's got all the towers and the fortifications and things there and just as you come in you've got to go through this really cool big arch and off to the side make sure you don't miss the inscription because I kind of like it it roughly translates as give the blind guy some money because it's like the worst thing in the world to be blind in Granada and I kind of agree with that because the views there are absolutely magical But by far the best part of the El Cazaba for me was El Torre de la Vela, which means the watchtower, which it's makes sense. Yep. Um, it is way up high. You can see most of the city, if not all of the city, and the views are just amazing, which as you guys have probably seen, we have done a couple of intros from there, which speaks to how great the view was and I, I thought it was really amazing. I know you like the flags a lot. Yeah, there were flags waving, and so there was the city flag, and the state flag, and the Spain flag, and another flag that has become really important to me. I really like so many things about what UNESCO is doing to protect these spots. It's probably my second favorite UNESCO site of all time thus far. We are going to 390 more, so we'll see if this one can get supplanted for the silver or if Angkor Wat somehow can get supplanted from the gold medal in my heart. But uh, big shout out to UNESCO. You guys do some great things. And we got to the Nazarene palaces just in time and it was amazing. It was like everywhere you looked, you saw some incredible incredible architecture, some awesome carvings, amazing, beautiful motifs. It was like almost overwhelming how beautiful that place was. Right, and they work in all the like geometric shapes and then even the wood is all inlaid on some of the roofs and then they've got poems and prayers all right. in Islamic to spread everywhere. And so every time you come around the corner, there's something new and it just all seems to tie together really well. One of my favorite thing is the Mokarabe. So make sure you are looking up because it's gonna look like they got like these little stalactites hanging down, but geometrically they actually make it so that it's more protected from like earthquakes and things mm -hmm. like that. And it wasn't until just recently that even our computers could figure out how the engineers made that work so well, but it's absolutely gorgeous. There's all sorts of really iconic things to see there. One of them you have to stop by because it is this beautiful reflecting pool and it is in the patio of the Myrtles. So this is the palace of the last caliphs in Granada before the Reconquista. And after you get your great pics of the courtyard of the Myrtles, you definitely need to head further in and go to one of my favorites and probably one of the most famous parts of the Alhambra, the Patio de los Leones, which is the patio of the lions. And it's amazing. It's got these really cool, uh, I think it's like 12 lions that are all in a formation and they're carved stone and there's a big fountain and they're like spitting water. It's really amazing. But one thing I will say, is it can be very crowded. 
hard to get your pictures in. So one of the only problems with the Alhambra is you can't help but just continue to take picture after picture and try to angle so that you have less people in the way. Uh, the nice thing about coming here right during the COVID thing is it really isn't that crowded right now. And uh, we are being able to get to vantage points like this without a whole lot of uh, traffic. And if you guys are into Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, getting the best pics possible, first of all, you should be following us because we, we do see some amazing things and we've got some amazing videos and photographs. But second of all, you definitely need to go to the Alhambra. There's some amazing architecture and there's just really beautiful places and you will definitely be getting a lot of likes from videos and photos from there. Oh my goodness, and there's just so many opportunities to take photographs. I mean, on the floor it's beautiful, on the wall it's beautiful, on the ceiling it's beautiful, in the distance it's beautiful, for close up it's just, there's so many fantastic opportunities to take pictures and if you, you know, sneak your face in there once in a while that'll be okay too. Yeah, and those pictures can be really beautiful too if it's of those two, although sometimes the lighting did make me look at least okay. In my opinion, you can't talk about the Alhambra without talking about the gardens of the Generalife. And no, it is not general life. That's what we see as English speakers and we think it means general life, but that is not what it means at all. It actually goes back to an Arabic word which means the architect's garden. And when you go to this amazing area, you can see why they called it that. It is a true marvel of architecture. There are beautiful buildings, but the actual gardens themselves, I think I could have gotten lost in there and just they could have left me for days wandering around in those gardens. It's pebbled with these beautiful white and black mosaics throughout the entire garden complex. There are three terraces, and two of the terraces are the lower terraces where mostly used for vegetable and fruit production, which they still use today. Uh, the more recent gardens is the upper terrace, which has those beautiful mosaics, gorgeous fountains, roses, all kinds of amazing, gorgeous flowers that will just overwhelm your senses. And that was created most recently in 1951. But what strikes you as you look at all of these beautiful flowers is, where did all the water come from? It's a true marvel and really causes you to wonder. Everything that we saw at the Alhambra was impressive, but probably the most impressive thing was all the water. Not only because of the beautiful fountains and everything, but just having water there was amazing because there isn't water there and there wasn't a way to go down into this giant rock that you're building your fortification on. So what you had to actually do was you had to ship the water from this high river off to the side and they actually drilled it all the way through a mountain and then brought it over all these bridges and the gaps of the mountain and they brought it over and that was really really cool and they still use it to this day with a little bit more modern mechanism but the water is still coming from that same river and it comes in and it feeds all these things and it shows the grandeur of the palaces and then they also would store some of it in cisterns at the Alcazaba just in case somebody decided to shut off their water supply which is something that they had to protect as well. But it's really interesting how they brought the water in. And speaking of interesting things, we promised you at the beginning that we had a bunch of interesting information and interesting facts for you. And if you've been watching, we thank you very much. Two weeks ago, we had an interesting facts about Granada. Mm -hmm. And we've got some interesting facts for you today about the Alhambra as well. Fact number one. Alhambra actually means the red fortress or the red castle because of the clay with the red hue that it's uh, made from. That's awesome. And also the Alcazaba, which is made from that same red clay, can actually tell the time. Hmm. How's that? It's got, it's like a sundial. The tower was actually mathematically created so that it casts a shadow and it tells you what time it is so you don't lose track of that appointment you have for the castles. Fact number three. Inside of the Nasrid palaces, there's the Hall of Ambassadors, which is really cool. I mean, they have amazing tile work all over the place and the 
They have the Hebrew prayers on all the walls, but also on the ceiling, they have that Mokarabes, which some people think represents the seven heavens of Islam culture and God's resting on the eighth heaven, which is really kind of amazing. Yeah, that's kind of amazing. And the detail that they put into that is awesome. But they didn't only do it where you could see it all the time. They actually had all these great details in the substructure. And there's this little area down in the bottom where no secret is actually safe. They call it the Whispering Gallery. Isn't it also called the Chamber of Secrets? I hope there's no basilisks there. Yeah, I hope so too. That would be <laughs> terrifying. We did not get to see it though, unfortunately. It's best to go see it on a night tour, apparently. But the reason that they call it the Whispering Gallery or the Secrets Chamber, oh, Secrets Chamber, yeah, is that you could whisper on one side or be shuffling on one side and the person on the whole entire other side could hear it because it was acoustically perfect. Our fifth fact is that the Alhambra actually wasn't damaged when it was taken over by the Spanish, but it did get some damage from the Napoleonic Wars, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, I heard he had short man complex, but uh, it is absolutely gorgeous. They rebuilt it really nicely, but we had to thank one particular person for that. This guy, Washington Irving, an American, he traveled over there in 1828, soon after the war, and he wrote about the Alhambra and the way that he wrote about it was so beautiful and articulate that everybody wanted to go there. So he was kind of like the first influencer? Yeah. So let's give him a big thumbs up. I really like Washington Irving. And I wanted to thank you guys wholeheartedly for sticking with us. I know this was a little bit long, but there was so much great footage that we shot there and so many great things to learn. And so I hope you did learn a lot about the Alhambra. We got to see a lot of really cool things and I hope you guys enjoyed, you know, kind of following us through our trip in the Alhambra. And I hope you find yourself in the Alhambra and in Granada soon. And as always, find, find yourself, yourself on, on the journey. journey.